Once again welcome to Medico Mallu. This time we have to see the central nervous system practical performer. First of all start with the general examination and the first subheading is higher mental functions. Next is examination of the cranial nerves, then the motor system, then either the sensory system coming first or the cerebellar system and lastly the miscellaneous. Higher mental functions write the patient's education status occupation the handedness and the known languages and the first point is the level of consciousness whether the patient is alert confused drowsy or coma the glasgow coma scale comes under this but you need not write that second is the orientation with time place and person third is attention like we have to check by asking the patient to subtract a number from 100 serially like 100 minus 4 96 minus 3 like that fourth one is memory check the immediate memory recent memory and remote memory next is the speech speech there can be abnormalities like aphasia dysarthria dysphonia or it can be normal next is intelligence based on the patient's educational status appearance and behavior mood whether he is normal or depressed and check whether there is de- any delusions illusions or hallucinations delusions are false beliefs illusions are misperceptions like if there is a rope and the patient perceives it as a snake and hallucinations are false perceptions hallucinations there won't be any stimulus like there won't be any rope but the patient sees it uh, sees a snake or the patient will tell there is a rope even without a stimulus the speech there are many components first component is the fluency check for the word output grammar paraphrases and neologisms paraphrases are unintended sounds neologisms are new words created by the patient himself next is the comprehension with word and sentence with the word ask the patient to point to fan or bed etc comprehension with sentence ask the patient to point to fan then bed and lastly to pen and next check for the repetition to repeat words like ball book etc and also in local language next is naming to identify colors body parts objects like watch and check for the reading depending on the patient's education status and writing also ask him to write letters numbers and short sentences regarding the dysarthria it is the abnormal speech by defective articulation and syllable usage dysarthria can be spastic where the patient takes high effort to speak out it can be flaccid where nasal twang can be present it can be ataxic where it will be staccato or scanning type of speech where separation of the syllables are significantly seen and dysarthria can be dyskinetic type where unwanted punctuations are seen aphasia it is a loss or impaired production or comprehension of language on writing or speaking due to the lesion in the brain mostly it is acquired it can be of four types the first one is the nominal aphasia second one is the broca's aphasia third one is wernicke's aphasia and fourth one the mixed aphasia or global aphasia nominal aphasia it is impaired naming where the fluency comprehension and repetitions are normal broca's aphasia is the motor aphasia motor means there is difficulty or defect in on production of the speech where naming fluency and repetitions are impaired but the comprehension is normal the patient can understand the question and the patient cannot answer by himself but if asked the patient can write down and this is how we distinguish the broca's aphasia from wernicke's aphasia and third one the wernicke's aphasia the sensory aphasia that is defective in sensation of the speech where the fluency will be normal the comprehension will be impaired hence naming and repetition will be impaired which means the patient will answer something else for example if he asked where did you go yesterday 
he will tell that i ate breakfast half an hour before like irrelevant answers will be there so the fluency will be normal but the patient also cannot write to the correct answer if asked but writes something else and finally the global aphasia which is the mixed aphasia where naming fluency comprehension and repetition are impaired next is examination of the cranial nerves first check for the olfactory nerve which is the first cranial nerve tabulate it as right and left and check for the smell second is the optic nerve check for the visual acuity visual field with confrontation test color vision and optic fundus is there but we don't check optic fundus nowadays and 3 4 and 6 oculomotor trochlear and abducens tabulate it as right and left and check the pupil its size shape symmetry in the eyelids where there is any retraction ptosis or squint present check for light reflex the direct and consensual light reflex the afferent pathway for light reflex is second nerve and efferent is the third nerve which is oculomotor and look for accommodation reflex the eyeball movements and also any nystagmus light reflex the abnormalities of the light reflex we have to understand first one it is rapd which is marcus gun pupil second type is argel robertson pupil and there can be homi adi pupil rapd relative afferent pupillary defect it is the defect in the afferent pathway of light right and the left eye where there is no light shown assume the left eye is abnormal when we shine a torch into the right eye due to the direct reflex the right eye pupil will constrict and also do via the consensual reflex the left eye also constricts but while we shine the torch to the left eye which is the abnormal eye as the afferent pathway is absent is defect there won't be any direct light reflex and the consensual light reflex is also not activated hence right and left eye both the eyes won't constrict this is the marcus gun pupil or rapd the other one is the argel robertson pupil where the pupils will be small and irregular and there will be light near dissociation which means pupils do not constrict with the light but constricts briskly to the accommodation reflex next is the homi adi pupil where the pupils will be large and sluggishly moving and fifth one is the trigeminal nerve we have to check its motor sensory and the reflexes first one the motor part the temporalis masseter and pterygoids we have to check temporalis and masseter are checked by asking the patient to clench his teeth pterygoids by giving resistance to the opening of the mouth the sensory part the pain light touch and temperature we have to check in the right and the left side check at the ophthalmic maxillary and the mandibular areas of the trigeminal division separately and tabulated next is the reflexes corneal reflex conjunctival reflex and jaw jack we have to check the corneal and conjunctival reflex in the afferent pathway is via the trigeminal nerve in the efferent pathway is via the facial nerve jaw jack it is exaggerated at pseudo bulbar palsy the afferent is the fifth nerve and the efferent is the fifth nerve itself next is the facial nerve the seventh nerve its motor part secretor motor part and the sensory part we have to check the motor part the muscles of the facial expression and the nerve to stapedius are checked the nerve to stapedius is checked by asking the patient for any hyperacusis the muscles of the facial expression we have to tabulate it as right and left and check for the wrinkling of the forehead by asking the patient to look upward here we are checking the frontal belly of the occipital frontalis look for blinking the blink rate will be reduced in element facial palsy and look for bell's phenomena by asking the patient to close his eyelids where the eyeballs will roll upward and outward and it is seen in element facial palsy forced eye closure against the resistance we are giving to the eyelids we are checking there the orbicularis oculi look for the nasolabial fold if it is affected 
the prominence will be reduced in the affected side ask him to smile or show the teeth and if there is any deviation of the mouth to the normal side it means there is a palsy and there we are checking the risorius muscle look for whistling it is to check the orbicularis oris blowing the cheek checking the buccinator and checking for the platysma by showing the lower set of the teeth and opening the mouth first you have to demonstrate the show the patient how to make it out next to the secretor motor part look for drying of the eyes that is the cirrhosis here it is lacrimal gland secretion is impaired look for drying of the mouth that is the cirrostomia the salivary gland secretion is impaired there but it is not usually tested sensory part taste at the anterior two third of the tongue we are testing with sugar salt or sour solution and important point is that we have to ask the patient to keep his tongue outside during the whole test other test we look for vesicles in the external auditory meatus it is seen in ramsay hunt syndrome if there is a loss of taste in the anterior two third of the tongue with hyperacusis and unilateral palsy of the whole face it is the elemen facial palsy the human facial palsy we have discussed in our hemiplegia video the eighth nerve vestibular cochlear nerve the vestibular part and the cochlear part we have to check vestibular part ask for tinnitus and vertigo and look for nystagmus the cochlear part three tests we will be doing with tuning fork of 512 hertz the rinne's test weber's test and the absolute bone conduction in rinne's test we look for air conduction and bone conduction normally the air conduction will be greater than the bone conduction and it is rinne's positive if bone conduction is greater than air conduction it is suggestive of the conductive deafness weber's test normally is bilaterally equal if it is abnormal it will be lateralized and third the absolute bone conduction we are comparing the bone conduction of the patient with that of the examiner assuming the bone conduction of the examiner will be normal and this is the way how we check it rinne's test we do if the air conduction is greater than the bone conduction then we check the weber's test and if the weber's test is equal that is the sound is heard bilaterally equal then the patient has normal ears if the weber's test is lateralized to the good ear it will be snhl sensory neural hearing loss and if we are getting bone conduction more than air conduction in rinne's test then it is always abnormal here the weber's test will be lateralized to the abnormal or bad ear why because as air conduction is less than bone conduction here there will be reduced external noises so it is more heard in the abnormal ear so it is suggestive of conductive hearing loss checking for 9 and 10 the glossopharyngeal and the vagus together ask for any history of nasal regurgitation or nasal twang check for the position of uvula and the arches of the palate here this is the uvula and this is the arching of the palate the uvula normally it is centralized but it is but may be deviated to the normal side in case of unilateral palsy see this is deviated to the normal side arches of the palate there will be drooping and flattening of the palate on the affected side of the palsy this is the affected side left side here the arches of the palate are drooped or flattened and the uvula is deviated to the opposite side next is checking the reflexes gag reflex and palatal reflexes gag reflex we check by touching the posterior pharyngeal wall each side separately the afferent pathway is 9 and efferent is 10 palatal reflex touching the soft palate similarly and look for the contraction of the palate here the afferent is the trigeminal nerve and efferent is vagus nerve this reflexes are absent or reduced in element palsy and it is exaggerated in human palsy other test the taste in the posterior one third of the tongue but it is not checked nowadays 11th one is the accessory nerve it is innervating the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius so look for wasting or less prominence of these muscles 
In case of bilateral trapezius weakness, the head tends to fall forward. In case of bilateral stenocleidomastoid weakness, the head tends to fall backward. Look while the patient is getting up from supine position. Normally, the head will rise up first, but at stenocleidomastoid weakness, the head lags behind. And this we have to tabulate it right and left with stenocleidomastoid testing by giving resistance to the neck turning and the trapezius by giving resistance to the shoulder raising. And finally, the hypoglossal nerve. The position and movement of the tongue we have to look. In human palsy, the position of the tongue on protrusion, the tongue deviates opposite to the affected side and while inside the mouth, the tongue will be in the midline position. In element palsy, on protrusion, the tongue deviates to the affected side and while inside the mouth, the tongue deviates to the normal side. And this is how we distinguish whether it is EMN palsy or element palsy with the position of the tongue. The power of the tongue we test by, by asking the patient to push the tongue against the cheeks and we compare both sides with the examiner's hand. The tone of the tongue, it is spastic in human palsy, flaccid in element palsy. Look for any fasciculations. In element palsy, like bulbar palsy, there will be fasciculations in the affected half. Look for any atrophy. It is seen in element palsy and also in long-term human palsy, like pseudobulbar palsy. Next is the motor system. Here we have to check the bulk, tone, power and reflexes. The bulk, we check the upper limb and the lower limb, in the right and the left separately. Upper limb, we look the mid-arm circumference, the mid-thigh circumference in the lower limb. Tone, we tabulate it right and left and upper limb and lower limb, we have to check separately. The tone can be hypertonia or hypotonia. Hypertonia is seen in UMN palsy, hypotonia in LMN palsy, neuronal shock stage etc hypertonia can be spasticity or rigidity spasticity it is a velocity dependent increase in tone whereas rigidity can be two types cogwheel and lead pipe and this rigidity is a feature of parkinsonism next is the power power of each and every joint we have to check and grading must be done grade 5 is normal power Grade 4, there is movement against resistance, but not fully. There is some deficit. Grade 3, is there is movement against gravity, but not against resistance. Grade 2, there is movement, but not against gravity. Grade 1, there is a flicker of movement. And grade 0, it is complete paralysis. And this is how we have to tabulate. For example, shoulder joint, flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, medial and lateral rotation we have to write down separately and grade it down like this and the corresponding muscles of these actions has to be learned next is reflexes either we write it here under the motor system or we write it as a separate heading reflexes can be superficial reflexes and deep tendon reflexes superficial reflexes are corneal reflex conjunctival reflex gag or palatal reflex Abdominal reflexes and plantar reflex. Plantar reflex, we look for the Babinski sign. Deep tendon reflexes are jaw jerk, trapezius jerk, biceps, triceps jerk, supinator jerk, knee jerk, angle jerk, and clonus. Clonus, we look at patella and angle. And the plantar equivalence, the lower limb especially, must be learned. They are Oppenheim's reflex. Gordon's sign, Shadok's sign, and Bing's sign. These signs you have to learn in detail. And the plantar equivalence in the upper limb also must be known. They are Hoffman reflex and Wartenberg reflex. The root values and the nerve innervation of some important reflexes. In biceps jerk, it is C5 mainly, but actually innovated by C5, C6 with musculocutaneous nerve. Supinator jerk, the root value are C5, C6 and mainly C6. It is innervated by radial nerve. Triceps jerk by C7, innervated by the radial nerve. Trapezius jerk by C3, C4 with the spinal accessory nerve. Knee jerk 
by L2, L3, L4, mainly the L4. And it's by the femoral nerve and angle jerk by the S1. Regarding the released reflexes, which are primitive reflexes seen in neonates, which are released or seen in elderly people in kind, some kind of brain lesions. They are grasp reflex, permomental reflex, sucking reflex, snouting, rooting, glabellar reflex or glabellar tap seen in Parkinson's disease. Next is the cerebellum or coordination. The upper limb and the lower limb cerebellar signs we have to look. Upper limb, we do the test like finger nose test, finger finger nose test, pass pointing, rebound phenomenon and dysdiadocokinesia. In the lower limb, we make the patient to do the heel knee test, finger toe test, tandem walking and importantly the gait. Some people will do Romberg sign for checking the cerebellar lesions. But actually Romberg's sign is seen in posterior column lesions which is a part of sensory system. And in cerebellar or coordination, look for involuntary movements like tremor, myoclonus, convulsions, chorea, dyskinesia, hemibalisms, dystonia, atetosis, tics, etc. And other signs of cerebellar lesions are hypotonia will be present, dysarthria is seen, nystagmus can be seen, ataxic gait and pendular knee jerks are other important signs of cerebellar lesion. Few words about tremor. It can be resting tremor, intentional tremor, postural tremor, which are seen in Parkinson's disease. Gait is also very important. We have to learn in detail the types of gait and the most important gaits are drunkard gait or cerebellar gait, dragging gait, stamping gait, high stepping gait, festinan gait or Parkinsonian gait. Some examiners will ask us to demonstrate a particular gait of such and such lesion. And next is the sensory system. We have to look for the superficial deep and cortical sensations in the face, upper limb, trunk and the lower limb. And we have to neatly tabulate it like this. Face in the right side and left side, upper limb right and left with right its anterior part, its posterior left also anterior and posterior in the trunk right and left lower limb right and left and their anterior and the posterior part regarding the superficial sensations it is the exteroceptive sensation the pain fine touch and temperature are checked deep sensations the crude touch pressure vibration and proprioception are checked cortical sensations are tactile localization two-point discrimination stereognosis and graphesthesia are checked and this is how we tabulate the sensory system and finally the miscellaneous part where we check the autonomic nervous system and we usually check for orthostatic hypotension and the peripheral nerves we check for any thickening or tenderness the commonly checked peripheral nerves are ulnar nerve radial nerve and sometimes the greater auricular nerve and also we have to learn the conditions of thickened or tender peripheral nerves. A common example is leprosy. And Romberg sign, some used to write it in miscellaneous part. It is seen in posterior column lesion. Signs of meningeal irritation, we look for any neck stiffness. We look for the Koenig sign and Brudzinski sign. And any abnormalities of the skull and spine, we check. And this is the performer of the central nervous system. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos.